What's up, all you cool kids? This is Daisy Collins of TsunamiRose.net coming at you live uh, as I out do Monday through Friday here in my little craft room in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm doing a journal-related project. If that is what you also like to do, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button down below. I do post a video pretty much every single day. So today what we're doing is we are making fabric pleats. And this is, of course, using all those uh, fabric that I've gotten um, from bed sheets. These are all mostly bed sheets. And these were a lot of fun to make. This took quite a while to do. Definitely more work than my lace and fabric scrap. Definitely a lot more work than that. But we are working through it. So. Oh, why does it say the frame drapes being dropped? I don't know what that means. Anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing. This took quite a while, but it is a fun project, and it's, it doesn't feel like it's a very hard project. And you probably have everything you need already to make it. So what I did was I have, um, these are one-inch one inch, uh, fabric scraps, which I actually cut with my um, rotary cutter and my cutting board. And you're just going to need a little piece of, <laughs> if you have a little piece of flat, smooth plastic, that's even better. Uh, this is a piece, <laughs> just a piece of cardstock. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. This is just a piece of cardstock. So you can cut the piece of cardstock to however wide you want your pleats to be. If you want them to be one inch, you can make them one inch. This is about half an inch. This is about half an inch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the fabric, put the little piece of paper underneath that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a seam ripper, is what I've been using as my tool, and you kind of move the fabric underneath the piece of paper, and there is your first pleat. You have to be a little bit uh, smooth about taking out the piece of uh, cardstock there. Oops. I'm using a straight stitch, and I'm just using it on a default setting, so I'm not actually changing anything about it. So then I put my little piece of fabric uh, paper underneath the fabric, scooch the fabric underneath, hold it, and then we so once we're at least a stitch inside to that that pleat we start the next pleat and it's such a slow process that you don't have to worry about not being in center because you're literally stitching three and then stopping I, at no point during the making of this whole little roll here did it go off center so <laughs> it's a very slow process and like I said, definitely you 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 will not get off center. But if you do, you could definitely get back on track. And sometimes the pleat like gets out, so you have to like position the fabric back in place. I if there's a faster method of doing this, let me know. But slowly but surely, you get there. Again, the fabric is one inch wide. You can make it wider if you'd like also make your little pleats wider if you'd like you can make them one inch pleats and I tried using a piece of uh, chipboard but it wasn't like slick enough and it would get caught in the paper I mean in the fabric so that's when I switched over to this piece of uh, cardstock and it seemed to work pretty good so uh, now that you're done with the little piece of fabric that you have you're gonna open up, uh, pull up the, the needle or the foot. And you're just kind of, kind of going to tuck your new piece of fabric underneath the last pleat. And the little seam ripper really helps with this right here. Um, sometimes the fabrics that I've chosen vary in size slightly. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're the same size. Sometimes they're a, a bit smaller, but that's okay. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. And we just continue on with the new fabric. 
And I've had these strips for a while because I was doing the scrap trim and lace and I cut these up, but these are too wide. And I was like, well, I don't want to, like, I know I'm going to use them one day, so I kept them. So I have a bunch of fabric that's pretty much already caught to this size, which is, like I said, is one inch. One inch long strips for my, for what I'm doing. You can make them wider. So you just tuck the fabric in and then kind of hold it. And then here we go. We're going to tuck the fabric in. Be careful. Sometimes I do kind of touch myself. <laughs> it does happen. I do. I do jab myself. So I don't know what to say about that. This is not for kids. <laughs> This is not a project for kids, maybe. <laughs> so we're just going to gently tuck the fabric underneath there. Pull down the pleat. Pull up the little cardstock. And you get a couple stitches into that new pleat, and you start a new pleat. And these are not ruffles, so I didn't want to call them ruffles or all ruffle some feathers. <laughs> they are pleats. <laughs> I don't want to get called out by the Ruffle community on YouTube. <laughs> so, like I said, it's a very slow process, but it's, I mean, why, oops, 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 I messed that one up. While you're watching TV, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it takes that long. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Oops. It fell out. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. It, I'm telling you, you can't really, um, okay, okay, the pleat state. Hang on. <laughs> I had to concentrate. Okay, so right here, you could start up with the new fabric already. I have quite a few fabrics myself, but I didn't want to cut up any new fabrics. So I was too lazy. But I have a, a basically a one gallon size bag of fabric next to me that's already cut up into this. So I'm like, well, I guess I might as well keep going because it was pretty just pretty easy to start. And the seam ripper has been the best. I tried using a little pokey tool, but that didn't. It was like sticky to everything you do get faster at it I tried doing two at a time but it, it wasn't really any faster <laughs> it took me just as long to set up and then sew through <laughs> I thought about it though but if anybody does know a faster way let me know I'll try it out see I tuck it in underneath sometimes it doesn't work Fabric. And there has been a couple pieces that I did put in backwards. They happen to so this one I'm gonna put on top since I can't check it in underneath. And then we're gonna make the ruffle so we'll tuck this whole thing underneath. And you do have to do it gently. This is like I said, this is a very slow process. <laughs> Especially when you're first doing it, but you'll get the hang of it. You will get it. And of course, it's a junk journal, so nothing has to be perfect. You're not making it for the Queen of France, so. T Friday 77. Hello, are you using quarter inch cardstock? Um, I'd say it's half an inch. I'd say it's half an inch. Definitely about half inch. And Stephanie with Shepherd Creations. Hey, girl. Hi, Deline. If you kept up with me on my uh, Cool Kids Facebook group, you would have seen. I posted this last night. <clears throat> I was pretty excited about it. It's pretty much all I did since I seen it. 
I saw Paula Lemon post about it. And um, when I looked up how to do it, I looked up how to do it with a... You already got a nice little, nice little long tail there. Um, I think they did it with like car and, uh, fabrics or something because it was so thick. <laughs> Such thick fabric. Okay, so let's do this. I'm just gonna gently tuck this fabric in here. Close it up. She was using, they were using something like plasticky in the video though. And I don't have anything plasticky like that. So a cardstock seemed to be slick enough to come out. And my little cardstock piece is probably like, like three and a half inches long. It just kind of fits in my little tiny baby hand. <laughs> We're just gonna continue. And like I said, you do kind of touch yourself with the seam ripper, but it's not it's not sharp enough to like actually hurt you. It just wakes you up. <laughs> just wakes you up a little bit. Like I said, there's really no fear at all of not sewing down the center because you're going so slow. <laughs> So slow, that's not an issue I came across at all. You're not really moving it much, at least back here, to get it out of place. The seam ripper seemed to be the perfect um, tool here. I, like I said, I tried to use my little pokey tool. That was, that's a little bit more scary. <laughs> that's a little bit more scary. And your fabrics, of course, don't have to match. It's, you know, for a junk journal, so it's kind of fun um, if they don't match. And trust me, this is me going fast because I've done this all night. I pretty much did this for a couple of hours this morning also. As soon as I woke up, I'm like, I need to make more pleats. I want to have a nice stash of them. Maybe I could do a journal or two of them. I literally stopped making my scrap fabric with lace trim and I'm like, I need to do this. So here I am, you guys. Of course, I have a large stash of bed sheet fabric, so I am uh, not needing fabric right now, but I'm always looking for it. Um, so I always have fabric on hand to try stuff. In a cheap way, so it doesn't cost me a lot to try things. I'm gonna check this in. I like imagined, I, you know, those French dresses, and then doing it with this. This is how they made their little pleats or whatever. It's a little crazy. I think you could also sew along the top. Here. You don't have to sew in the middle. You could technically sew along the top. I have not tried that myself. I have not. Of course, this method shrinks whatever fabric you're working with down to about half the size. So be aware of that. My pieces of fabric are pretty short. So in this project, they're like even shorter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I have this one. I'm not really pressed about if I double them up, but I do like to have a nice distance between fabrics. I will check to make sure I haven't used that in a minute. I have maybe about five fabrics to choose from, so it's really not that big of a rotation. Like I said, I could have cut out more fabrics, but I got a little lazy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm okay with this selection. It's a little shabby chic color scheme. I'm cool with it. <clears throat> and of course, oh, 
Of course, you can use um, whatever thread you want. I just wanted to check. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It might be some paper is all crooked now. So. <laughs> I mean, it's just a piece of cardstock, so it's not going to stay straight through multiple uses. <laughs> but it's okay. Like I said, just throw on something on TV that you don't need to actually look at. This is a pretty enjoyable process. <laughs> okay, so let's see. You make it look so easy to do. Girl, I've been practicing it all night. That's why I've been doing it for hours now. <laughs> In the beginning, it wasn't looking so hot, really. But after practice, and this little seam ripper just is like the perfect way to like scooch fabric underneath the fabric. You'll get it. You'll get it after three hours. <laughs> You'll get it after three hours, too. <laughs> I must have done it for about, mm, I want to say three hours. That seems a little crazy. But also, it seems about right. Because <laughs> it's literally all I've done this morning. The pleat kind of came off, but you can manipulate it back in place. But it definitely does take practice. I literally just learned how to do this yesterday. Maybe there's a faster way. I don't know. I don't know. This is what I'm doing. fabric inside. See, I just have strips and strips of these. This is too long here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, hours and hours, girl. But it's fun to get better. I don't know for me. <laughs> it's okay if I'm not doing it well. As long as I get better, then it's fun. I think, obviously, I mean, I just used the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm not really an expert on anything. <laughs> but that's okay. And if anybody wants to buy it, oh my gosh, Paula Lemon was selling them. She was selling them on Junk Journal Junkies Boutique by the yard, or by the foot. I don't remember, it was like $4, probably for a foot. I can see why. This takes a long time to do. She didn't, I guess she doesn't have a video on it, so I had to do my own search and find it. I will post the original video um, that I watched in the description after the video is done being live. Um, I didn't, the fabric was like really thick though, so, but the, uh, the idea is the same. They also didn't do the whole fabric switch, so I had to remember what I've been doing before with my trim. I'm tucking things underneath, sewing on top of and such and such, so that worked. And I did. I think I did the same thing with paper as well when I did the paper ruffles. I think of. I ended up doing that as well. Sorry, oops, I touched the camera. 
Okay. Yeah, it was the same technique with paper ruffles. Okay. So you definitely have to have taught yourself how to sew slowly. <laughs> how to press the, the little foot to go slow. That's a skill on its own, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So we got our fabric right there. Fabric underneath. Carefully pull it out. Like I said, I used some like plastic, like a smooth plastic piece. We don't have that. So I had to improvise. <laughs> Cereal box chipboard, it like caught on, so it was too, I don't know, abrasive. It had too many like little edges. It wasn't smooth enough. Okay, it wasn't smooth enough. So cardstock, it was just ripped. So tuck it in underneath. Uh, sometimes it doesn't want to, it's okay. <laughs> Okay, so in this case, see, it doesn't want to tuck in underneath. It's being a little rebellious. Okay, they're kind of good. It doesn't want to tuck in underneath. It's okay. You just put the fabric underneath. And we will just continue. Put it underneath that. We'll just continue with the ruffle underneath, and it's okay. That's just how that ruffle is. I mean, pleat. <laughs> pleat. I know it's not a ruffle. Okay. So here we go. These fabrics totally don't really match. But it's still cool for drug journals. <laughs> of course, you could use the same fabric over and over. But I decided to mix it up here. Okay, let's see. Have you made paper pleating? Yes, I have. Hi, God's Desire for Me. Hi, Om. Kayleen. Hi, Kayleen. Lou Ellen. Lou Ellen, I need to message you back on Etsy. Um, I need to contact Etsy because you're not the first person I've heard have that problem in my shop. So I'm still pondering it over, Lou Ellen. I'm sorry I haven't uh, messaged you back. <sighs> but it took me a while, girl. It took me a while, uh, Lou Ellen, to get this coordinated. <laughs> It's been hours. I've been doing this for hours, like I'm telling everybody. <laughs> it's been hours. Okay. I'm supposed to have a pleat there already. Let's see if I can do it. I don't know. Okay, good. We got it done. And there goes the fire department. Okay. Definitely try and keep it all going straight is another uh, thing. You basically just have to make sure that you're... There's really no, nothing else to say than just make sure you're going straight. And that when you pull out your paper, the pleat doesn't stick out. Because sometimes that happens. You can mess up your pleat. You can mess up your pleat taking out the piece of cardstock. Um, sometimes the pieces like that bother me, so I'll just cut them straight, but it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it 
really doesn't matter. You could, of course, hand tear the fabrics as well. Um, but I decided to do with my rotary cutter and whatnot. And like I've said before, it's such a slow process that at no point did I even deviate from the center of the ribbon. Isn't that hilarious? Like I pretty much sewed down the center of about, oh, I don't know how many yards that is, maybe, maybe three yards. And uh, hardly deviated from the center because it is such a slow process. Okay, now we tuck that in. And again, the fabric is about one inch wide. <coughs> one inch. Tuck it in underneath. Slowly pull out the little paper. And as soon as you're a stitch into the next pleat, you make your, into the pleat you do your next pleat. And you can make your pleats uh, wider than me. I'm doing them about half inch. The half inch makes sense for my project here. Stuck in the fabric. Such a slow process. <laughs> but now I really want them for my journals. So here I am, you guys. Okay, boo boo. He wants to look outside, but they're coming through with the leaf blower. I think I might have a foot that goes on my sewing machine that does pleating. Okay, I could check that out too. I don't know. Sounds cool. Hi, Minxie. Try not to fall asleep. Yeah, this is a very slow process, so good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that, Minxie. Yeah, I knew they were going to get close. At least you can look out the window to look at them. Okay, so we came to the end of that. So this is what I've done so far in the last half hour. Probably about, oh gosh. Let's see, like one, yeah, this is about like three feet. So, okay, three feet in half hour. I guess that's not the worst. But again, that's after hours and hours of practice. <laughs> So I guess you could get even better with time. I mean, this is just my second day of doing this. I'm sure you could get faster then. Definitely. Okay. I'm also not trying to like find the next YouTube channel or check my phone right now. So <laughs> that's called being productive. In, pull it out. Get in, pull it out. But definitely the seam ripper <laughs> has been my friend. <laughs> it has stabbed me a couple times, but it's been my friend most. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I go a little too fast. Okay. 
But definitely, I think if you did this over the weekend, you could definitely build up a stash, which will quickly be used up <laughs> when you do a junk journal. I put in a lot of rough, uh, a lot of trim, so this might end up doing not many books. <laughs> But it is awesome. I know Angela Hutchenstein. Uh, she always does pleats on her journal pages and they look amazing. Now I know how to do them, so now I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. It's going about pretty good. Even if you use the wrong side of the fabric, I not that I would know, <laughs> but it's okay. You really can't even tell, and it's such a short piece. <laughs> that is fun. Again, you just try and keep it straight, and it's pretty easy when you tuck it in. You can tell if it's going to go straight or if it's like this, you know what I mean? So you just want to make sure it's straight when you pull it out. Okay, we're gonna need another fabric. Okay, so I had, like I said, I already had a big old bag of this, so this was a pretty easy project for me to just get started on. Um, but if you do need to make a strips, you could rip them or you could, I, I use my, um, my rotary cutter to make these. I have the fabric folded and I just cut up strips and then I cut them shorter later on. Definitely hand cut strips would look cute too. You get that nice frayed effect on the end. Okay, let me look at the camera because this is very much a project that I don't look at the camera. I don't look at the, the screen for. I think, uh, oh yeah, okay. So mine aren't that neat though. Making fabric ruffles is one of my favorite things to do. I haven't made official ruffles yet. I've only made pleats, I think. Supposedly, you just pull this, the thread or something for ruffles. I have to look that up, too. That actually sounds cool. But then I heard there's, like, a ruffle maker. So it's in, and then now there's a pleat maker. Pleat maker would be nice to have right about now. But... This is still this is still a project you can do if you don't have none of that fancy stuff. <laughs> Just a little piece of paper. <laughs> Just a little piece of paper and something pokey. A little seam ripper. Which I bought these on Amazon. I bought like a dozen of them for like five bucks or something. Because Walmart was like, oh, five dollars for one. I'm like, y'all crazy. I know that's not worth five dollars. <laughs> I bought one, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna lose this. Like I just know myself, so I bought myself like a dozen more. <laughs> so I'm the worst. Ooh, I'm so excited. I think I'm gonna go to IKEA tomorrow. My mom, you guys. So I won't be going live tomorrow during the day. I'll probably go live uh, at night. More than likely. But I am excited to go to Ikea. I love Ikea, you guys. I need a new shelf to go behind me. I want a new shelf for um, my ephemera. Like all my done pieces of ephemera. They need their own spot. And they don't have their own spot. And I would like them to have their own spot. 
I'm more of a shelf person than I am a cabinet person. I feel like if things are tucked away and put away in drawers and behind doors, like I won't see them and I'll forget about them. So I prefer everything be in bins with the top off and, and see-through bins that I can see. Um, otherwise, my little brain just tends to ignore it. So I prefer shelves and bins and baskets that you can look directly into without struggle. Because apparently I struggle. <laughs> so I'm just excited. I love Ikea. Probably have my mom meet me in my house because my house is on the way to Ikea and hers is the opposite. Okay, so have another thing of fabric. I have such a large amount of this fabric so far I cut out something it's funny. I don't know how I do. Sometimes I'm telling you, I just sit there and I just do one thing all day. And I wonder how I end up with so much of it, but it's because I do one thing all day. Like <laughs> I'll spend the whole day doing one single thing over and over and over again. I am right here with you, Daisy. I have to be able to see everything. All my bins are clear so I can see inside them too. Yup. Yup. Mine are pleated like yours, but I called them ruffles. Okay, okay. <laughs> I get corrected on, on YouTube if I if I call things the wrong thing, which I don't mind. I really don't mind. Because <laughs> I would call these ruffles too, but then, you know. <laughs> Then I would get told. Because I believe Paula Lemon also called them ruffles. Just like I'm just saying what Paula Lemon's saying. I should open the door. I don't hear the leaf blows, do I? I guess not. We'll see if he'll come back out. I want him to enjoy his out time, <laughs> his door time. Boo boo, boo boo, little boy. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to get into this ruffle and lift it up. Piece of fabric underneath. Tuck. And then with one of my pieces of um, pleats, I did go back and I did a zigzag stitch in between the line. Which I don't know if I'll do that anymore because when I stitch these onto the page, I'll add another piece of thread. So I might just leave it like this, just a little bit plain. It's okay. I do like the look of the two lines in the middle of the ruffle, but I don't have my two needles set up yet. I have to get that out. I've been afraid to do it, but I really just got to do it. I like the look. Okay, so we're going to tuck in our pleats, the last one. Okay, okay. Put the fabric a little bit on top, and then it's like you're tucking it in also. Kind of like folds in. It's a little bit easier. Comes part of a new pleat. Just like that. I don't want to see how much I made in an hour. So I'm like, oh, I don't go. Fabric. 
telling me, yeah, this is this is a, officially an addiction now. I think I'm going to spend all weekend probably doing this, which is not the most productive thing, but. <laughs> Um, it's just kind of like what I feel like doing right now. This has like captured my imagination now. Plus I have a whole bag of fabric to do it with. So, <laughs> I'm like, so. You definitely could be using a zigzag stitch here. It doesn't have to be a straight stitch. It's just easier to manage for them, for me. While I'm learning, but I can see how you could do a different stitch, definitely. Let's see that. It's really easy to lose track of time when you're doing something you enjoy. Definitely. Definitely that. Girl, you do you. <laughs> Organizing storage is one thing I struggle with, trying to figure out the best way to organize things to be handy and accessible. Girl, since I've moved... I've put things certain ways and I'm like actually working and I'm like, this setup is not working out. Like, you know, I set it up because it looks good there or whatever, but like, it's actually not working for me. <laughs> like I need to figure out, I'm probably going to, I don't know. If I get this uh, shelf, it's going to be back here. And if I get the shelf, that's going to be for my ephemera. And then I have the Razcog cart, and I think I can use the Razcog cart for my tools that I use all the time, so I can have them next to me and wheel them out if I'm just doing this and I don't need my tools. Um, I think that's something I'm going to have to do because all my tools are, like, on that wall, and it's, like, that's kind of far away from me. But where I used to be, that used to be right next to me, and it was very great way to store things and now now it's not <laughs> now not so much now it's kind of annoying. So I've been watching like uh, decoration organization videos. I don't actually know how to decorate a house, <laughs> but I'm going to start with my office. Um, I do kind of like the whole like cluttered look. I'm definitely not a minimalist when it comes to decoration. I just don't know how to decorate. And so my walls are always blank, but it's not because I'm a minimalist. I just don't know how to do it properly. But I am going to go to Ikea, like I said, tomorrow. I'm going to check out their decor. I'm going to check out their organization. Um, I'm going to look at the shelves and try and uh, uh, get a, a, make a decision on which shelf I want. Um, it's definitely going to take me a, a few uh, trips to Ikea to decide, though. I'm definitely not a, a once, like, I'm just going to, I'm definitely not going to make a decision tomorrow. Let's just say that. I'm just there to look, but I do want to purchase more of those plastic trays that I have to organize my ephemera because I think those are the cheapest option. I've been looking for, uh, like, bins, like, organization bins on Amazon, and they're just so expensive. I'm not going to spend $20 on a plastic bin. That's just too much, like, <laughs> Like, that's a little, like, I get my stuff at the dollar store. You guys are, like, you guys are pushing it with, <laughs> with what is an acceptable price to me. <laughs> but um, I want to buy, let me show you guys. I want to buy more of these bins right here. These are from Ikea. These are from Ikea, and they are great. Um, they fit right into the Razcog cart. Um, and they have, what, like one, two, three, four, five compartments. And they're just wide enough to, like, hold your ephemera. So I want to buy more of these. And this is what I want to buy my shelf around. If I'm going to use a bunch of these bins, then I want my shelf to be at least this wide. You know, or, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> and then I can also use the, um, I can use the counter, the, the top part of it to put my, uh, 
a scanning cut on. I can have my scanning cut right behind me when I need it. <sighs> it's it's a lot of things. Or I could even put my tools on top of that. Um, so that way I can have them behind me. Like I said, I'm going to put it right there behind me. So that's an option. Anyways, 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 my cat is not coming out to look out the door. So I might just close it. And as soon as I close it, he'll, he'll probably come out. <laughs> as soon as I close it, he'll be like, why did you close it? Because I don't want the sound of airplanes on boo in my videos. And I'm not really talking to anybody. Anyways, um, <laughs> totally normal. I'm totally normal. Okay. He's just such a funny cat. He's so silly. As soon as his, as soon as my husband gets home, though, it's all about my husband. It's kind of funny. Cat's a traitor. <laughs> okay, I have the camera right, like, in my face. Okay, now it's just at my cheek. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get the shot here without kissing the camera. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna close the door. Feel like you can hear everything. I know you can't, but it just feels like you can. Okay, so there's that. Now checking on what fabrics I've been using. Tuck this in. Okay. I was about to ask if you live near the airport. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I live near a very busy airport. Very, very busy airport. Uh, I live not, I live about 10 minutes away, <laughs> like a, not even five minute. I live like a five minute drive uh, from the airport and it's just constant, like nonstop airplane sounds, which I'll live. It's fine. I'll live. I can tolerate a lot. <laughs> I can tolerate a lot for a low rent, <laughs> for low rent prices. I'll tolerate. Looks good. Just keep tucking, just keep tucking. Okay, so we've come to the end of that strip. We are going to get another piece of fabric. Now I'm getting picky. Now I'm getting picky. See, that's the same fabric. <laughs> okay, here's this one. <laughs> yes. And then, like I said, my cat wants, like, exactly at, like, 11 o'clock, he starts asking for the door to be opened. <sighs> I think he went to go take a nap somewhere. Probably in my bed. It's not a dumb cat. He'll go to the bed. <laughs> He's not the cat trying to sleep on top of the fridge. No, he's on the bed. He knows what's good. Oh, and I'm excited because Monday I'm going to go shopping with my friend Rick. That's right, me and Rick hanging out. Uh, we're going to go thrift shopping. So I'm going to go all around town. I'm going to look at all the stuff. I want to find office decor stuff. I want to find a picture frame for a poster that I bought. And because they want like $20 on Amazon and I'm like, I'll buy that for like six bucks tops at a thrift shop. Like, don't even. <laughs> I will take my measuring tape. I don't care. <laughs> I'll find one for six bucks. Don't even. Don't even with me. Like. <laughs> and so I'm looking for home decor, office decor, maybe. I don't know what I'm looking for. Uh, maybe some more fabric. Probably not because I shouldn't. <laughs> Probably not because I've already got enough. But I'm definitely also looking for, um, junk journal stuff. I feel like there's a hair on my nose. Sorry. Um, 
so we're definitely gonna literally spend the whole day uh looking for stuff so i'm excited about that Gonna, you could definitely spend a day, a solid day, maybe even two, going through all of the uh, thrift shops in Las Vegas and the surrounding area because there's like technically like four cities all squashed here in the valley. Um, but you could definitely spend two days and that's not even counting the antique shops. We have a lot of antique shops, we have a lot of mom and pop thrift shops and we, we have the big name thrift shops, and then we have some other name thrift shops you've never even heard of. So we have, and then we have like two or three Goodwills that sell by the pound, just by the pound. Um, there's a lot to see here in town, definitely. Definitely a lot of thrift shops in my, my town. I'm look for cool books. Y'all know the... Y'all know the drill of junk journal supply shopping. Okay, so let's keep going. We got 10 more minutes of this, of this nonsense. <laughs> we got 10 more minutes of this nonsense. <laughs> okay, so let's get this here. Tough to the side. I'd be forever bankrupt if I lived there. You would. You would. There, It's not even a joke how many thrift shops there are in town. And we're going to make a whole day about it, so I'm excited. Ikea thrift shops, like, don't even with me. It's going to be a good weekend. <laughs> I'm going to have fun this weekend at Ikea. Sad, I know, but it's okay. Ikea's cool. <laughs> right? Right? I think... <laughs> That's what all the kids are talking about, right, Ikea? <laughs> I think. Okay, let's get this fabric here on top. Even if the fabric doesn't really, is not being held by here, you can still tuck it in and make a pleat. You just have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful. This fabric slips. Okay, so this fabric is literally pretty much plastic, so it slips like nobody's business. <laughs> it probably catches fire just as fast, but that's not what we're talking about. Because this, it literally feels like plastic. So some bed sheets. I don't know. I don't know who okay that, but they're really nice bed sheets. Okay. So one more tuck underneath. And then not to mention all the libraries here in town have their own bookstores. And one day a month, I can't remember what day, but one day a month, they have all of their bookstores, their used bookstores on sale, half off themselves. I can't remember what day. I really need to find out because I need more books. I actually, actually need more books. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? But it's true. It's true. It's true. Okay, this pleat is going kind of ugly. That's okay too. My eyes are a little cross-eyed right now from doing so many pleats. <laughs> I woke up from my sleep at night and did pleats, took a nap, woke up and did pleats. My eyes, my eyes might be like psh, crossed right now. Okay, so we are going to Tuck again. 
that was like a really bad looking six, 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 six inches right there, but it's okay. It's okay. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back, back, back again. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Hi, Emily. Hi, Patricia. What's up, girlfriend? Yes, this is mostly bed sheet fabric. Actually, actually, it's all bed sheet fabric. Yes, yes, all of it. Officially, yes, it is all bed sheet. So if that's what you got, you guys, you really got no problem practicing. Because bed sheet fabrics, you literally get yards and yards and yards of fabric for two bucks. So don't even go get you some. We are going shake and bake, y'all. Freaking shake and bake. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, okay, yay. So, um, if you're not a part of the Junk Journal Junkies Facebook group, not Junk Journal Junkies, <laughs> the Junk Journal Cool Kids Facebook group, go ahead and join. I do post, I've been posting on there quite a lot, actually. Whenever I have something excited, I don't even post it on my social media, I kind of just post it on my Facebook group. Uh, so go ahead and join so you guys can see what I post what I'm working on, what might be up on tomorrow's live. Also, you guys can show me what it is that you guys are doing. And I uh, would love, love, love to have you guys there. I will leave the link at, and the description box below. So do make sure to check us out. If you are in the search for Junk Journal Printables, you can always check on my shop at tsunamirose.net. I design Junk Journal Printables. And I do try and post new items there. Of course, you will hear about the announcements and the new items being announced here on my channel. But you can check out my store meanwhile and see what I have to offer. I literally have like 500 junk journal kits that you can check out. So, you guys, that is going to be the end of my live. I did make quite a bit. This is at least three feet of ruffles so you do get quite a bit like I said I've been practicing so about after a couple hours of practice I've been able to make about three feet of uh, pleats in about an hour I'd say that's pretty good I say that's pretty good how long are your pieces yes one inch one inch probably some are by like six inches some of, my, some of them might be eight it just varies if you want your fabrics to do a lot of switching fabrics, then do smaller pieces. Definitely about six inches was the smallest piece that I had. And they literally end up being like two inch long pieces on the whole thing. But that is the fun of this project. Like I said, I like the whole fabric switch up. So definitely do about uh, one inch by six to eight inches long. So you guys, thank you so much for joining me on today's live. I will see you guys tomorrow. I'll be here probably in the evening. So just expect a new video from me every single day, as you should, Monday to Friday. Thank you guys so, so much for having me here, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.